has been a totally hot year for Sangeeta Patel. Really? Are, are you kidding me? We are just rolling out of January 2014 and you've already had the most jam-packed year and I, this is just the beginning for you, darling. It really is. It's been a, an amazing year for me. I, I don't even know how to express, like, this is first of all an honor that I'm on the other side of the chair. <laughs> and I'm actually really nervous because I'm not used to being on this side. Can I tell you, I always get nervous when I'm interviewing someone that is a media personality. Because really? I, totally, totally. Why? Just because, I mean. Okay, let's know, just sit up. Yeah. Okay, there we go. We're good. Let's just totally good. loosen up. Okay. <laughs> but it has been an incredible year, as you mentioned. I can't believe what a change it was for me to go to ET Canada, to a national Canadian show, and really be part of North America too. Like I've been traveling so much. Insanely, It's babe. been insane, yeah. yeah. I think the longest trip was the Royal Baby, which I was there for 12 days, and yeah. they won't announce when the baby's happening. So I felt like I was pregnant. I felt like I was bloating <laughs> the whole time I was there. Um, and then we finally had the baby, and it was an amazing moment to be there and see the paparazzi and to see the whole concept of that. I think that's part of being part of this show is that you get those moments, those really special moments and sharing it with everybody. And me being new to this, I think everyone's going through the experience with me. Absolutely. Uh, and they get excited when I get excited. Like last week, two weeks ago, I was interviewing George Clooney. George Clooney makes me coffee. Like, are you serious? Oh my God. I walk Did they get it right? Do you? <laughs> I walk in and he goes, would you like some coffee? I'm like, hell yeah, I want some coffee. <laughs> would you like milk or cream? I'm like, cream. And so <laughs> we had a great conversation and I was in awe. I'm not usually starstruck, yeah. but George Clooney took my breath away. And then is he as hot as he, he seems? He is. Oh my. Oh my. And he was wearing a leather jacket oh. and he's sitting there and he's relaxed and he's just an incredible guy. And those yeah. were the moments. And I walked down and I was a bit shaken because this dude just made me coffee and I just interviewed George Clooney wow. and that doesn't normally happen to me so that was a really exciting moment for me. Yeah but I mean you've interviewed an incredible plethora of A-list celebrities I mean Brad Pitt when you yeah. were like whoa pregnant. Mm -hmm. I was three months pregnant actually Yeah. Um, and it was my first child and uh, he was there for the one by one gala so Matt Damon's there he's coming to support him and he kind of just walks by the red carpet doesn't want to talk to media and I yell out I'm pregnant I'm cold <laughs> and he runs back to me Oh my gosh. He's, his wife was just pregnant with their first child and he's holding my hands and he goes, how are you feeling? Oh how my are you gosh. doing? I'm like, uh, well, Brad, I, uh, you know, I'm just pregnant. You know? like, I didn't know what to say and all everyone's cameras are up, their mics are up and, and here I am starstruck and I got a chance to chat with him inside the event which was, just, it was incredible. Literally, we're sitting like this just chatting about wow. babies. And my mom calls me, she goes, so you're pregnant? I go, oh yeah. my gosh, you're kidding so me. So I didn't tell my mom until, I told Brad Pitt before I told my mom <laughs> that I was pregnant. So that was a moment as well. So yeah, that's one of my highlights of my career for sure. But you know what? I mean, there's been many highlights of your career, babe. I mean, in the, in the last little while, but oh. let, let's go back to the beginning. I mean, you did not start in the media business. Uh, How did you get from where, you know, you were and, and what you really educated for, which yeah. is like a far cry from where you're sitting right now. I can build the cameras. Here. Exactly. I, could, yeah. I mean, engineering to, you know, being like at the forefront of media in, in Canada and around the world. I mean, how do you, Start from the beginning. I don't where, even know where, where, did you, where did you start all this? There was always a passion for me for television. When I was young, I used to host. When I was in school, I always wanted to be the MC. I've always wanted to do things on stage. There was it was always part of me. Yeah. But I loved math and science. It really was part of me that I wanted to do something that was different. And I kind of want to challenge myself that if a guy can do it, I can do it too. That Hell was my yeah. challenge. That that was my attitude. And I really I wasn't a feminist, but I always thought you know women can do it. Really, I really thought about you know we got to push the boundaries. Absolutely. And so I said, okay, well, let me try for electrical engineering. And I also applied for journalism. Really. Got into both programs. Got a scholarship in both programs. And I sat down with my dad, and he goes, "Where are you going to get a job? Where are you going to have a career?" Yes. And, he, and I he, get why parents say yeah, that to us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I understand, and I I'm glad I did engineering. Um, because I came out with a job, I had a great career, I got my senior engineering, I got my professional wow. engineer, so if you need me to sign an, a passport, I can do that. Okay. Uh, but I'm coming to you, but, Yeah, but I also kept my passion going because I volunteered at Rogers, mm -hmm. and I did a lot of television shows. I was covering TIFF. Yeah. Um, I did a show uh, that was Toronto Living, where I covered events in Toronto, so I still lived it yes. on a volunteer base, but here I am making a lot more money yes. as an engineer. 
And then one day I met someone who was from the Weather Network and he goes, because you love science so much, why don't you try weather? Yeah. It's a mix of media and television. I thought, you know what, this is the time to do it. Yeah. So what I stepped a great in foray of bringing yeah, the two passions together. together. You know? It was yeah. great. And, yeah. and it really did change everything for me. And I've never been at a place where you can ad lib for six minutes. And that's where I was That's tested. hard, babe. It is. And yeah. once one of my screens went And off, get it right. And get it right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And my monitor died one day, and I'm on my own, and they go, you got to kill six minutes on your own. It's 25 degrees outside, sunny, nothing to talk about. I'm like, what am I going to do for six minutes right. on live television? So what did you do? I talked about the Raptors. I watched the game <laughs> the night before. I talked about what's happening in the West, you know, in Calgary having these events. And, and that really tested me that I actually love, you can do love this. television. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can do it, television. because there's a lot of people on TV that shouldn't be there, darling. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You really? know that. <laughs> Babe, let's not, let's not get political about okay. it, but there's, you know, there's always a lot of people in careers that they shouldn't be in yeah. because they choose it for all the wrong reasons but clearly you know you've, you've oh. got that natural um, bend towards just be, uh, being able to ad-lib mm -hmm. and, and you can't learn that in school it's just like you got it or you don't got it mm -hmm. right and you got it girlfriend oh thank you so there you are at the um, you know weather network yeah. how do you go from weather network to entertainment tonight Canada it's crazy I ended up getting a call to work at city TV and I worked there and Gord Martineau the anchor of the six o'clock news said something to me he goes come here Patel he goes come here Patel oh you're calling me Patel I'm, I'm in trouble there's something wrong here <laughs> Gord Martineau's calling me to his office and he sits me down he goes I don't know if I can say this word but he goes you don't give you a say shit anyone. what you do on television okay say that again he said you can do you, you don't give a shit what you do on television I was like oh maybe I'm in trouble something's wrong here he goes that's what I love I go, Ooh. what do you mean? He goes, you forget there's a camera there. You don't care how you look. It's more yeah. presenting what you want to present. Absolutely. And I took that and I go, I'm going to mm. be myself from now on. Yeah. I'm not going to let anyone change me. I'm just going to be what I can be. And, yeah. and I think that took me far. I yes. think people were able to relate to me yes. when I was doing live television on breakfast television, when I was doing entertainment. Yeah. Uh, they felt like they were at that moment. There was incidents where I got on a horse for the first time and I was playing polo and I fell off the horse and oh people experienced that with me. Or, you know, I dropped a cake on live television, oh a $300 cake, and oh I was like, God. oh my God, what do I do now? And I'm just talking <laughs> to the camera and the chef is behind me and they're, everyone's panicking. We don't yeah. know what to do. Like, those are the moments people loved. And, uh, and I experienced that through City TV. So City TV really made me grow. Yes. Uh, the whole concept of doing live television, it could be scary, but for mm -hmm. me, it was just the perfect match for me yes um, and then doing entertainment I go you know what I kind of like this you yeah. know why I like it because I get to know people I get yeah. a chance to chat with them and and you know you could go in prepared with questions it always changes it you know you know what I find, I, I'll tell you what I find I mean like you know all the years that I've been interviewing many different types of yeah. personalities oftentimes from you know from my perspective with the South Asian community they're not really media trained right I mean you get all the media trained people so you got to be like on a different kind of game yeah with me I always sit down and I'm like I'm trying to pull it out of them like right. you know like tell me what you want to say because, mm -hmm. because they don't understand how to be interviewed right. right and how it can be just a fabulous platform for them to just it really is. get their messages out yeah. and um, so you know what I always find is that um, it's really difficult um, especially in the South Asian community I mean you being obviously like one of the most um, well-known South Asian media personalities really? in no. Canada come on girl no. you know it. <laughs> I mean, you've been to the Globes, oh. you've been everywhere, you know, you've interviewed everyone. And Air, what I love, airplane. Yeah. Go, uh, Air Miles. Good, I'm, I'm glad. Good. <laughs> I, I hope it's you that get, that's getting I get them, I get them. Okay, okay, good. I'm in good shape. So you know what the great thing is, is that with you and what, what I, you know, why, you know, I wanted to interview you and why I'm super excited about the fact that, you know, you made the Enoki list, which by the way, I mean, like, there's this committee from hell wow. that we have to go through, wow, right, yeah. babe? Because, I mean, there's so many, the great thing is, is there's so many people within our community nationally internationally that truly are buzzing some serious storms out there across many industries right. so with us we, we want to be very cognizant every single year that you know who needs to be talked about who is being talked about and why is their story relevant right mm. I don't think I need to say that much about your story darling because I don't think there's anyone in Canada or even really across you know the entertainment sphere of media that truly has got the visibility you've got but you're just so fun to watch girlfriend oh, yay! right <laughs> it's like because especially in entertainment I yeah. find and I'm really critical because I'm in the media business right. is that you know there's just so many talking heads 
you know, there's just like this whole performance that happens, right? right? And I'm like, oh God, not another one of those. <laughs> yeah. The great thing I loved about you, other than the fact that you're female and you're South Asian, <laughs> is, that, is that you're on the entertainment global platform, um, but you're just so people. Oh. You're so people. So people are like, you know, I find that, you know, I want to watch you. I want to know what you're going to say because I know it's going to come from who knows where. <laughs> and it's not going to be like this talking head scenario, which is, you know, oftentimes what happens in media. I mean, and I understand why that right. is, because there's certain salient points you need to get out there. Yeah. But you just, there's always curveballs that come into whatever it is that oh, you're no. doing. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? It's a great thing, yeah, okay. you know? I'm glad, I'm glad. So, so, you know, how did you get from CETV to um, Entertainment um, Tonight Canada. How, how did that all happen It, it was for you? a risk I took. I took on a, a position for only six months at ET Canada, covering yeah. Cheryl Hickey. Yeah. Uh, and I remember going in for the audition and thinking, oh, this is not going to happen, whatever. I just kind of went in and I didn't have the script the night before. Oh, were so you I'm meant like, to? Yeah. Oh. So she, she comes and goes, did you get your script? I go, oh, what script? I don't have <laughs> no script. And she goes, okay, well, you're up in 10 minutes. I'm like, mm. great, I don't have a script and I'm up in 10 minutes. And it was different <laughs> because I'm not used to reading prompters. I'm used to just ad-libbing right. everything. Right. Right. Um, There's another so, learning curve. Yeah, right? there was another learning curve, and yeah. it's very different because being in a studio like Entertainment Tonight Canada, it's very different. Yes. You're, you're in a different pose. You're you're looking at the camera differently. Everything's very different. Uh, again, I went in with my attitude, just right. me. I go, you know, this is this is me. Right. This is where you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. um, and it worked out. And the first day of work, here I am hosting Entertainment Tonight Canada. How I didn't, surreal yeah, is that? I, I, I remember standing there thinking, what is going on? Yeah. I don't even know what this moment is all about. Yeah. And I, I didn't absorb it until a few weeks after. I'm like, wow, this is so amazing. Yeah. This is happening to me. I mean, it's the most powerful um, you know, entertainment media platform yeah. in the Western world, darling. I didn't and know I, that. Are you, are, 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 you not, are you not like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but are you not like the only South Asian on that entire franchise? Yeah, I am. And it's funny you say that because I was in LA for nine days covering the Golden Globes, Critics' Choice, all that. Yeah. And I went to CBS Studios to go see E.T. Mm -hmm. So I got to go see all my colleagues and got a chance to chat with them. And one of our makeup artists goes to me, um, she was doing my makeup, she goes, I goes, am I the first South Asian person you've done makeup on? She goes, yeah, this is the first time. I've never done makeup on a South Asian. Wow. At the Golden Globes. I didn't see many South Asians. Yeah. It was pretty much me. And, and being at CBS, again, the same thing. You yeah. didn't see a lot of color. Here but I am. But they probably thought you were Hispanic, right, babe? They did. They did. Right? A lot of people were talking yeah, Spanish yeah. to me. But when I got to the studio where people actually knew me, they knew who I was South Asian. So I did look different yes. from everyone else. And well, that's I kind of a cool thing. It is. It is different. And I like you know, it. And you're kind of a hottie, so no, no. Oh my yeah. God. Okay. Come on. I love this interview. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, being there and the ET crew was like, "You got to do work for us," you know. And my first. ET moment was last week. I was on the U.S. national platform wow. on ET covering Justin Bieber. Oh my gosh! Um, but you know that that opened up doors, and I mean, thank God like, for Justin know, Bieber. No, no, no. <laughs> and there's been so much. I've like, been on radio shows. And it's just been going and going, and it keeps growing and growing. It's not just ET Canada anymore. Yeah. It's, a whole nother platform out in the U.S. Right. It's around the world, it's, right. so, it's so different. Look at and the I opportunities no for you, babe. I had no this idea. This is just the beginning. Yeah, I this didn't know This is where you're meant to be. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah, so that six months was just a trial, and I thought, okay, after that, I'll go back to weather, I'll work for, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but it just worked out, and they, I think they enjoyed working with me, and I think my so. different attitude, just a little, a little bit. bit. <laughs> <laughs> and they've tried different things now. We have conversations on our show, and it's more personal, we're trying different things, and I I think it's working for the show. Yeah, yeah. absolutely agree with you, babe. Yeah. And, you, and you bring that nice bit of color, that nice bit of splash, a little bit of splash. that little bit of sass. <laughs> you know? I still tan though, I still yeah. get freckles. I don't know why, but I'm a South Asian with freckles. It's kind of weird. No, it's actually not. You I, get it too? No, don't no, tell me you, you get it. I don't get that, but I always feel that I look really hot and sexy <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm tanned. Really? Yeah, I'm always like, damn, Raj, oh, you know? I get freckles, yeah. I don't look sexy. <laughs> no, that's kind of cute, are no. you kidding me? I'm sure guys will have a whole different oh, story. Sorry. Talking about guys, <laughs> Yes. Has, has your life changed in terms of this platform that you're on with ET Canada? I mean, do you get kind of, you know, like, are people tweeting and like, you know, Facebooking you and like, you know? Well, um, I'm a very committed Twitter, a Twitter person. I yes. tweet everybody back. It's just something I think wow. people take the effort to eat, tweet me, so I make the effort to tweet them back. And so. that's a part of your realism, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. so, yeah. So it's important to me that I 
stay connected with them. Um, I think I freak guys out because if they come up to me and they're, they're hitting on me, and I'll start talking to them. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, you don't like. And they're like, oh my God, this girl's talking to me. And they freak out and they run away. And it works. You yeah. should try that. If a guy oh gets on you, God, what a good you, one. Yeah, you just start talking to them and yeah. they, they freak out. But um, none of that's really <laughs> affected me. Uh, I have someone amazing at home, my best friend. Of and uh, Sam has been incredible. He, We've been best friends for 16 years, married wow. for 10 years. Wow. So he, I couldn't live my passion if it wasn't for him. Yeah. He is one of the most amazing guys I've ever met, and I'm so lucky to be with him. And he's an amazing father. He's my best friend. And we just have a great bond. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anything could ever break that because it's that strong. So oh, it's man. because of him. Absolutely. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, yeah. What a sweetheart you are. Aww, I'm sure he'll truth. say the same thing about you, though. <laughs> I don't know about that. No, I'm sure he will. Well, I'm sure it's that sassiness in you <laughs> that, that he finds really endearing. And I'm yeah. sure he never gets like bored for it even a second. Oh, I, I can tell. That. I can tell. <laughs> but how do you do it all, babe? I mean, like, yeah. I mean, here you are. You're constant. I, I see you all the time on like, Facebook and Twitter. And like, you're constantly like all over the planet. Yeah, I know. And I know. I'm like, how does she do it with this like brood of children? You've got like two oh, gorgeous you. children. You've I mean, that's a lot for me. I'm, I'm a mom with one kid, one kid, and I don't even know. Like, I mean, anyone that has more than one child to me is like a super, super human Aww. personality. Here you are traveling around the world. I mean, like at a drop of a hat, it's not even no. like normal no. jobs of traveling. No. This is like okay, you're on a plane in like two hours, yeah, and, going, and you yeah. need to make like everything happen. I know that part and parcel of that is just the support and the belief that yeah. you get from your um, committed relationship yeah, with Sam, yeah, for sure. But on the other side, um, you know, that you're still a mom. This still these kids and you know they're young kids and they, yeah. they want their mom yeah how do you how do you make that all make sense in your head yeah in the beginning when I first started and I traveled a lot it was really really difficult for me and yeah. I got extra help I go I you know I'm gonna bring your your parents here from Calgary to help us out um, and after two three days it gets really difficult. Yeah. If I'm away for two days, it's not too bad. Yeah. But after three days, I really feel it. Yeah. Uh, and I realize I've trained my, not trained my kids, but I raised them that they're really independent. Even mm. though they're young, mm -hmm. they know they're able to do things on their own and right. be able to be good together. They're really good sisters together. Yeah. And I, we always make sure one of us are home. Right. So Sam or I are, are home. And I, we have help at home as well. So. Uh, it's very difficult for me, but we do Skyping. That stuff always helps. Oh, I call you, them every don't day. Don't you just absolutely love communication? Yeah, I mean, people talk I love about it. communication, you know, in such a negative way, but I don't. To no. me, it's like the most important part of being a person that has more than yeah. one roles in life. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. you need it. You do. You really do. And every day, my question to my older daughter was like, how is school? It's so yeah. important I ask her that question. Yeah. It keeps that communication open because if anything's wrong at school, she knows she can talk to me. Absolutely. You know, and it's this is the age. She's turning seven. And yeah. And, uh, you know, there's going to be bullying. There's going to be all these issues. I want to yes. be sure I talk to her every day and ask that same question every yeah. day to make sure she's able to respond. And so little things like that really help me. In the morning, I call them. I call them in the evening. And uh -huh. then we'll sing to each other and make Aww. up stories. Yeah, it's really cute. We're into Frozen right now. I don't know if you've seen the movie Disney Frozen movie. Yet. I, I haven't. Oh, no. you got to watch it. You're going to okay. cry. You have it, to watch it. <laughs> Totally awesome. Yeah, it's totally uh, awesome. My son is 16 and he still loves Disney, Does so like, I'm oh sure he's going to drive me there. Yeah. I was on the red carpet with the writer and the songwriter for Frozen. I started yeah. singing the song. He goes, you're butchering my song. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I was awesome. But I was singing it to him because I love it so much. But off topic, but you know, we it, that's really important to me. And I stay very close to them. And uh, I take time off just to be with them. And that really helps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's next for you, babe? I don't know. Oh you tell God, me. Eh? I think I'm going to become the mayor of Toronto. <laughs> what do you think? Do you I, think I could do it? <laughs> well, you know, if the current mayor is anything to go by, I think anyone can do that job better. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a good job now? Well, I, I'm so I'm so non-political to yeah. me. Like anyone that's in a position of power is, you know. Yeah. I mean, we're not powerful. No, we're not. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> we just do what we do. <laughs> so, so you know, honestly, though, I mean, you, you know, you got this gig with um, ET um, yeah. Canada, and I think it's the best thing that they did. Oh, and I'm not just you. saying that because you're yeah. um, South Asian. It just it it just is. I mean, you bring like a different dimension to the whole show, which actually um, entertainment um, tonight in the states doesn't have. Right. You know that yeah. that that whole kind of realism vibe, as opposed to the talking head scenario that I was talking mm -hmm. about earlier. Um, would you ever do your own show? 
That's a good question. Yeah. I've never really thought about that. I Again, I love talking to people and listening to people. I find that you learn a lot just from talking to somebody. And, yes. Um, I'd love to do that, but I'm not sure how I would do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because um, you know what? The interesting thing is, like, you know, just the, the age demographic you're in is just completely perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm 25. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm 19, yeah, but, um, yeah. my son is 16, yeah. but we'll just leave, we'll leave the math. I was always bad at math, always like that's, terrible that's at like math. That's like you're 25 like me. <laughs> and you know, and, and, and you know, just, I just think there's just so much, um, you know, opportunity now um, for someone, you know, from mm. our community to just kind of take it to the next level. Yeah. And why not? Yeah, no, Why you're not? right, you're right. right? And, yeah. and, as, and just coming back to the point, I mean, you know, you're in the age demographic where people, you're, you're young enough to still be fun, but old enough for people to take you seriously, seriously. Oh, right? Yes. Which is yeah. kind of important. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, I mean, you, you basically are every role. I mean, you, you're a daughter, you're a sister, mm -hmm. you're, you know, a wife, you're a mother, mm -hmm. you have like this crazy ass career. You're South Asian, but you're also very rooted in um, Canadian and Western yeah. um, society. I think there's enough experience as a woman, yeah, right? To, 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 yeah. yeah, so you know, yeah. and you know, it needs to be done. Yeah, we that, need to rock it to the great. next level. I'd love level, to do a darling. talk show. I, I think yeah. that that'd be great, actually. And having a minority representative out there, yeah. that'd be. And I think for you, I want to tell you when you called me and you told me about this, you really opened up my eyes. Yeah. I've always thought of myself as someone in the business, but never a South Asian in the business. Business. Right. So really, I was like, wow, I, I, I can't believe, when we met that day at the party, I was like, I've never seen myself that way. Yeah. And it really, I thought, okay, this is pretty cool. Because I was born in downtown Toronto. Right. I didn't know anything about culture. It was right. more, it was more just everyone's the same, right? Yeah. And everyone and is so, the same. But you know what the magic is, um, Sangeeta, is that you've got a platform that you can either do nothing with, yeah. or you can do something with. Right. That's your two choices in yeah, life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I just feel that you know the South Asian community, and you know this is why I do what I do, and it's why I believe in what I do, and yeah. and, and I, I just feel that there couldn't be a better time in you know society to to really rock the story of the South Asian yeah. without just trying to legitimize ourselves because mm -hmm. we're already legitimized mm -hmm. you know people are always trying to you know uh, talk about the south asian story from the perspective of you know let's just hammer own the south hammer at home the south asian story right, you don't right. need to do that right. we've already done that right. what we what we're doing next that's what matters to me yeah. Right? right? So people like you that are in the kind of positions that you are, and the fact that you're very relatable as a, um, you know, just a regular girl mm -hmm. or a regular media personality, but on the other side, there is this flip side where there's this cultural lenience towards who you are as well. Right. Something needs to be done with that girlfriend. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, give me a talk show. Yeah, so let's, let, we, <laughs> we definitely need a talk show. Yeah, let's okay, do it. Needs it to happen. Right? I would love to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, you know what, I keep doors open for anything and yeah. everything, you know, you never know what you're going to, like I'm a prime example, anything could happen. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities coming up in the near future, which is just great. And I, and it's great that I can grow within ET Canada and they're Absolutely. seeing that and they're letting me do that, you know. Um, it, I'm just amazed by some of the stuff that I've been able to do and yeah. uh, you know I just never thought I could ever get to that point but you just never know yeah but, but that's a good thing right because you yeah. don't over plan yeah things just the universe just opens itself up because you're not yeah. closing doors by by just planning one door no you should never do that you can't ever do you that can't. you are on the Anoki list and we're super excited about the fact that I'm you're so there excited. how did you feel when we told you that you made the list I was shocked <laughs> I was totally shocked I'm just I'm one of those people I go to work enjoy myself and then go home have my chai and hang out with the kids. You know, I'm one of those just pretty chill person. And yeah. um, to get that recognition, I was uh, very honoured. Such a pleasure oh, having you here. sit in my chair. I know that this is not going to be the last time, but it's definitely the first time. Yeah. And I look forward to all the tremendous things that I know that you're going to do because of the fact that you do not set rules for yourself. You just roll with the flow, and that flow is just going to keep going on and on. It, I mean, from the drop in the ocean of sitting there at um, you know Rogers and you know yeah. just saying, you know what, I'm just going to do this for the hell of it. Yeah. To, to be on the platform that you are with um, ET Can. Canada in such a short span of time and being a mom and a wife and all these other things that you have to commit your life to I know that this is just the beginning and there's great things that are going to happen and we're going to be here to tell part two of that story Yay. thank you so much that darling sounds so exhausting <laughs>